Hi, Tom here from Allergens Released. Today we're going to make chicken palm. Chicken palm, marinara, and uh, pasta. To get started, we're going to start with marinara first so that we can get that going, so it's going to take a moment to cook. But let's find out what we need for that. So for marinara, we're going to need some ground tomatoes, which I picked up two 28 ounce cans of just ground tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, either one is fine. One cup of red uh, red onions. You can use yellow if you'd like, or white onions if you like. I prefer the red because it adds a little bit of a added flavor to the to anything I use. Uh, I'm gonna have a tablespoon of basil, a tablespoon of thyme, a tablespoon of uh, parsley, a tablespoon of sage, a tablespoon of rosemary, and a tablespoon of oregano. Four tablespoons of garlic and two teaspoons of sugar, two teaspoons of salt and pepper, salt and one teaspoon of pepper. Meanwhile, I have, in this pan heating up, I have two tablespoons of canola oil. I have water going for our pasta, and I have oil heated up for our, for our, our deep fried chicken. So let's get started. So we're gonna start by taking our onions, and we'll add them to the pan. And we're gonna take our garlic, we'll add that in. We're going to take uh, two te teaspoons of salt, go right in there with it, a teaspoon of pepper, and we're going to take our sugar. We're going to put all that in. So I know there's a huge debate about sugar and sauce. So the reason I put sugar in sauce is just to kind of balance out the acidity of the tomatoes in your sauce. It'll add a more rich, full flavor. So we're gonna let that, we're gonna let this saute for a couple minutes, all that stuff come together. Also, you're gonna need a quarter cup of red wine. I'm just gonna get that ready for you right here. So I actually found a red wine, or actually a little vineyard wines that are Caleb accessible, as I like to call it. Stuff that he can he can consume that he normally won't be able to consume. So once we get this started and going, we're going to start to work on our chicken next. So what we're going to need is we're going to need some chicken breast. And put it that. So I just I just pick up your local family pack at the store, and I'm gonna prep that for you right uh, once I get this going. So. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's some juice starting to come out of all these vegetables. And that's all those flavors just coming together. The salt and the, the salt and the sugar are bringing out all the juices of all the vegetables, the garlic, the onions, you know, and it's just gonna pull up and all those things are gonna come together right at the bottom of this pan. Why don't let that saute for a couple minutes? Meanwhile, we get ourselves a nice little knife here. Okay, so I'm gonna add my wine now. 
what the wine does, wine adds some sweetness to the foil, but it also works as a de it deglazes the bottom of the pan. So when you cook stuff, stuff starts to sit at the bottom of the pan as it starts to cook more and more. So what that wine does is the acid in the wine picks that up and puts that back into whatever it is you're making. So we're going to let that reduce and let that wine cook off, that alcohol of the wine cook off. So right now, I have this on like a, a medium to high heat. It's gonna take a couple minutes for that uh, alcohol to burn off. So now that the alcohol, now that the alcohol is gone, we're gonna add our tomatoes. Throw that in, incorporate all that together. And we're going to add in our herbs. I like using fresh herbs as opposed to dried herbs. I think they release their oils better. They release them immediately and you can put them in at any point in time in the process. Whereas dry herbs, one, you have to use less because the, the, the flavors are concentrated a little more. So if like, for instance, I'm using a tablespoon of each of these herbs, if I was to use a dry, I'd have to use a teaspoon. One third the difference in, in the herbs. So, and you have to put those in when I'm sauteing those vegetables to start to bring all that flavor out. It takes longer for that flavor to incorporate into your dish. So, and then also you have to look at what they do once the, uh, to get that, preserve those to dry them, to, to, to can them, to package them. Sometimes they put like a, uh, a uh, what I like to call an anti-clumping device. Sometimes it has gluten in it, sometimes it has soy in it. So you really have to kind of look at your label and see what they're doing with it. You know, see how they're holding it, preserving it. So, just to keep that in mind if you're ever doing it, always check your labels. So I'm gonna turn this down now. I want this just to simmer now for then. That's going to take about an hour to cook. So I'm going to sit here and stir this occasionally while I do other things. Now let's get into this, this chicken. So, I'm going to come in and I'm going to clean this out a little bit. See if there's any fat on here. I like to take membranes out if I can. And then I'm going to, right down the side here, I'm just going to kind of slice. This is called filleting or butterflying. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to cut it in half. Right there, that's two people. Right there. That's two portions. And see how there's a lot of fat here? We don't need that. So we're going to cut that off. So theoretically, you could you could feed eight people with this package, the way I'm doing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have to I'm going to flatten this so that it cooks more evenly. Chicken's kind of like out of shape and everything, so you're going to want it to. Um, Cook a little more evenly, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, flatten for, for us. Just give my hands a quick wash. Got some plastic wrap here. Take that, I'm just gonna go right over the top here. I'm gonna just 
lay out a chicken. We're not gonna get it all on this one cutting board. We're gonna have to do it multiple times. And take some salt. Pepper. Just gonna flip it over. And, and I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. So we got a couple more pieces here. We can do that while it's in here. This is stir. How you turn this down to low when you want this because you have with, with tomato with any tomato product you have to be worried about it burning. And if you leave the thing too high and you don't can stir it properly, it's gonna cook too quick and it's gonna start to burn. And at that burnt bottom of the that flavor is gonna get into everything of, of that entire sauce. So just constantly give it a stir and keep it on a low flame. There's no rush. Flip these over and do these all at the same time. Pepper. to a plastic wrap and we're going to cover this again and why you might be asking why I'm doing this and it's to protect the chicken. It'll, it'll protect the board, it'll keep the chicken intact and it won't get all over the place. So now this is a mallet you can pick them up at any store. And you're going to use, the, this is a meat tenderizer, so this would be used, you use this end on, I don't know if you can see that or not, um, but that's got those little perforated. It's going to, that's for tenderizing meat, like steak and um, stuff like that, so you'd paint, you'd, you know. This end is for chicken or something you just want to flatten, you don't really need to tenderize, ten, tenderize it. So we're just going to kind of come across here. Basically, we're just trying to even this out. Again, come back, take a stir. So what we're trying to do is just even out these pieces of chicken so they cook even. This will take a couple of minutes, but it'll be worthwhile at the end. Now we're gonna take this off. We get ourselves a plate. We have a place to put this, and for the moment we're just going to rest them here. They're seasoned, they're flattened, and we're getting, getting them ready for the next stage of the process. So now we have to get our chicken ready to be deep fried. So there's different ways of doing this. Traditionally you would have a flour, an egg wash, and um, breadcrumbs. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to recreate what we do at the restaurant, whereas we do a buttermilk fried chicken. But obviously you can't have buttermilk, you can't have breadcrumbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use coconut milk and some loop flu flour and need another plate so you still want to do the same wet dry wet dry method so I'm going to come in 
and you're going to use the buttermilk or in this case coconut milk and into the flour. Do the next one. And so we just want to coat that. So one of the purposes of the, the, the system of the dreading the wet dry wet dry is because the one helps the other stick to it. So in other words the okay the, the coconut milk gives something to stick to the chicken and then the coconut uh, sticks to the chicken and then the coconut milk allows the flour to stick to the coconut milk which allows everything to stick together. Now that our breading is done, we're going to commence to start to fry these. So I have a candy thermometer in my oil, giving me a measurement of whereabouts where my temperature is. And you want it to be somewhere, you want it to be around 350. 350 is ideal for, for deep frying. In here I have about two quarts of canola oil. So let's get started. So we're at 350 right now. So we're gonna go in gently. You wanna let one stop cooking and then put another one in. So I wanna do more than four at a time because then you're gonna to start to raise that up a little bit and that can cause a problem. You don't want it to overflow and, and start a fire. So now, now that's ready. I'm going to give this a stir. Take. We're going to get the can ready to receive our chicken. So eventually you want to come in here very carefully. You start moving some of this stuff around so that it cooks, it, it uh, doesn't stick to each other. So this chicken is going to take about five or seven minutes to cook in here. Meanwhile, we're going to give our sauce a stir. And our water is out of boil. Give this a try, see what we're right here. There you go, that's starting to all come together. That's what you want to do, you just want to cook, you want to, with this slow cook, so to speak. So that by the time we're done with everything else, that'll be ready. So. These are finishing up. Take them out. Right onto the pan here.
He's going to wait for that to finish. Now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pasta. This is just some room free uh, pen, uh, penne. started boiling a gallon of water. Add some salt into that. Touch of canola oil. Help keep it from sticking. So we're going to let this pasta go for like seven minutes, which has been, it's been going for about three minutes now. So some of the things I found with the room free pasta is they don't cook the same as general pasta. Like sometimes you can go right from, you, can, you, you don't have to cool, necessarily cool down. A, uh, a regular pasta, it, can, it will hold a little better. It'll get a little sticky, but it'll hold. The gloom-free pasta tends to get very clumpy and very mushy if it sits too long hot. So once this is done, we're going to bring, uh, dump it and rinse it. We're going to get some more water going so that we can reheat it later when we need to. So. Meanwhile, we've been stirring this and this is close to being done. Check on our sauce here. Oh yeah, it's coming on really well. It's starting to taste that garlic and those herbs. And, and then tomatoes just coming together beautifully. The term used with pasta called al dente it means to the tooth. That's kind of where you want this to go, but this isn't quite there yet. I'm going to turn up a little bit more. Okay, right, so we're going to take this pasta again. All right, there we go. That's what we're looking for. We're going to take this, we're going to dump it. Okay, I'm going to get some more water in here. Okay, so our pasta is rinsed. Our marinara is done. I'm going to turn that off. We've got water reheating so we can reheat our pasta after. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to coat these with some sauce. Take our plant based cheese that does not have soy in it. I'm going to coat our chicken with the cheese. And now we're going to put this in the oven to let the cheese melt. That will take a little time. The cheese doesn't melt the same way normal cheese does, so it takes a little bit longer. This is why I put it in now. Okay, so we're gonna go and um, we're gonna pull this stuff out now. Take a look there. We need a spatula. Take a little bit of our pasta. 
go right back into this in here with it. That's not going to take long at all. Just reheating it. What you want to do is warm it up. It's already cooked. So you just put it in, pour it out, put that on your plate, get some sauce on there. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Can you see that? I can see that. Nobody knows the difference. You got a taste in here. Give me a knife. Give me a fork. Try some of this chicken first. Got some crunch from the from the breading, you got tenderness from the chicken. The cheese is creamy. Pass it warm and cooked food, that sauce. Oh yeah. Something for the whole family to enjoy. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And remember. Food is good for everyone. Have a good day.